It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to another episode of One Bar and Lepica's show. Today's episode, we are going to be breaking down lessons learned from uh, yet another loss to the Tennessee Titans. We're 0-3, but damn it, we learned some things. We learned some things, and, you know, this week's a little bit different because we actually learned some good things about this team. So there's a little bit of a positive spin, some uh, happy feelies going through our bodies right now. Mine are right around my nipple area. How about you? I, I don't know what happy feelies are, but I want them. I want them so bad. One day I'll give them to you. Thank you. Let's, you know, let's, let's jump right into this. I think the number one lesson that we learned is this Justin Jefferson character is a very good football player. Yeah. Who would have thought a guy who ripped shit up and we used a first round pick on him, who would have thought he would actually be good? Who would have thought you should actually use him and throw him the ball nine times and maybe good things will happen if you do that? Yeah. Um, what's most impressive to me is just the variety of catches he made. He, you know, he made catches when guys were all over him. He went up high pointed one once, uh, caught one in stride, did a little move, and then he's gone. Uh, this guy's got a great combination of hands, speed, and let's not forget how uh, let's just say how confident he is in his abilities. Yeah, that's uh, that's like my favorite part. I mean, obviously he rips shit up. Seven catches, 175 yards, big old long touchdown. But yeah, he is out there with swagger. He uh, thinks his shit don't stink, and I love it. I love it. And like you said, he's making a variety of catches. He was breaking tackles. He's waving at cornerbacks as he's going in to score. Perfect, yeah. perfect, <laughs> perfect day for him. He's what this team needs right now, some injection of fun, some injection of youth. Uh, everybody's kind of sulking around, going through the motions. you got this kid who's dancing in his way in the end zone from the six-yard line. Uh, giving this whole offense, this whole team, a real major boost in the ass that they need. So uh, thank you, Justin Jefferson. Let's uh, hope he sees another nine targets against the Texans, at least. Yeah, and the, I mean, the best thing about him breaking out not only is it gets us excited on a year that maybe be, might be pure shit, but it's going to help open things up for Adam Thielen. Kirk Cousins has been looking at Thielen those first two games every damn play. Teams are going to have to start looking at Justin Jefferson, hopefully opening things up for Thielen, Herb Smith, whoever. Start spreading that ball around. But Jefferson is our number two receiver to stay. Yeah, yeah. He might be number one in a couple weeks. Oh, my God. (laughs) Easy, Tiger. All right. Uh, Let's continue the positive spin um Dalvin Cook broke out and you know what very surprising like this our offense does pretty pretty good when we pound the ball isn't it weird what happens when you pay a guy 60 million dollars and you decide to use him Uh, I think he had like twice as many carries as he's been averaging the first two games and what does he do 181 yards uh a touchdown still not getting a whole lot through the air at this point but what, what was the effect of him being so successful on the ground? Open up the play-action pass, you know, kind of allowed for that big play for Jefferson in the second half. Um, it was no big mystery. The Vikings are a running football team. They got one of the best backs in football. Use him. They did. They put up 30 points. Yeah, and uh, that was a career day for him. Averaged 8.2 yards a carry for 22 carries. Amazing. And uh, something tells me they'll be going to that early and often with the Texans as well, and hopefully – through the rest of the season yeah yeah and you know the flip side of this is our next one what we learned um despite Justin Jefferson going for 175 yards Delvin Cook running for 181 the way our defense plays this team is gonna have to score 40 points a game to win that is a lesson learned number three yeah I mean that's pretty clear cut we don't even have to go into it that much our defense is gonna be an issue all damn year Uh, opposing quarterbacks are probably going to light up the stat sheet every damn week they play us. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to score a crap ton of points just to get a win. Well, it's too bad, too, because look at the game uh, yesterday. We're holding the 12 points midway through the third quarter, and all of a sudden, within two plays, the the Titans have the lead. And it's like, what the hell just happened? But when you have young corners who are struggling, who are learning the game as they go, uh, teams can go deep on them, and it happens. And it happened twice against the Vikings to something called Cleve Raymond. Um, we're just going to have to get used to this. The, the Vikings are going to give up a bunch of points every single game. It's weird for a Meg Zimmer defense that we've been watching for all these years um, to see him put up these kind of numbers against us. But that's what's going to happen, and it's going to be the norm moving forward. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do another positive one here. Um, Riley Reef. Riley Reef through three games is having one hell of a season, and this was a guy – that was a, a little pube away from getting cut, and thankfully he restructures. But Reef is not getting the love he deserves. 
He's not. You know, could you imagine how bad this line would be if we did cut him? If we'd have had oh. somebody in there, Ole Udo, who else were they talking about? Uh, Ezra Cleveland, over there, and Brian O'Neill Ezra over there. Uh, this line would have been an absolute disaster. We would probably have scored about 10 points on the year so far. You know, as bad as this line's been, it would be light years worse without Riley Reeve locking on that left side. And, you know, opposite him on the right side, Brian O'Neill's done a very good job too. So our tackles are playing well. It's uh, the shit in the middle there that's really stinking things up. Yeah, and it reeks. It reeks real bad. So Riley Reef, whew, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, – last, final, final lesson learned, and this is becoming very, very clear. What do you got? The Minnesota Vikings will be picking in the top 10 of the 2021 NFL Draft. Oh, God, and we might be back in two weeks for our lessons learned. We might be up to top five. We'll see. But, yeah, 0-3, gross schedule ahead. It's looking bleak. Yeah, it really is. You know, I, I think we could get the six wins. You don't, you're not that optimistic. Here's my, my worry is the Vikings are going to find their groove some point in the season, end up getting around that 12th pick, which will just put them out of quarterback range, and they're going to end up with, like, a D tackle or something stupid. Um, that's my oh, fear. Hey, that's my uh, we need D tackles. Let's be clear about that. We need D tackles and we need guards. We don't just need a quarterback. Yeah, but we need a sexy, young franchise quarterback that, you know, you see all these guys coming up who are just kind of taking the game over. We need one of those guys um, to, you know, have the swagger of a Justin Jefferson at the quarterback position. I'd love to see that. Um, again, my fear is we're just going to finish just, just a pew ball side of that. All right. Well, those, uh, those are our five lessons learned from yet another loss against the uh, Tennessee Titans. Yeah. So uh, this isn't a lesson learned, but this will be a fact learned for you all. Lisa, Lisa Sparks, you know her? No. Well, you will after this. She set the world record for most men slept with in a single day. You know how many men she slept with in 24 hours? I don't know. Uh, 906. We <laughs> were really close. 919. Wow. 